any advice for playwrights, including young playwrights? Well, I have vowed if I would ever start another playwriting program, it would include two workshops. One would be in making your own paper, so you got to respect the tools of the trade. And the other workshop, probably even more important, would be uh, marrying well. Because <laughs> I, I kept feeling guilty about encouraging people to pursue fields where the chance of earning a living were, were very slight. I mean, I didn't earn a living till I was in my 50s. Um, and then I discovered, hey, it's not such a bad thing. Um, <laughs> but um, what can you say to a player? I, I, uh, it's true, marrying well, I mean, <laughs> you, oh, it's so funny. Um, it's true, I made more money the year I was 17 than I it did until I was 33. Um, but my advice would be on a purely playwriting level, not on a like life skills marrying level. Um, uh, although you can marry well without marrying, you know, lovely, uh, is, would be, one of the things that was great about uh, when I was at um, NTS was that we also, there was a directing program there run by Maureen Labonte, and they intersected with us, so we got produced. And what I, and then I came to the Tarragon Theater and uh, I was able to get produced. And if you write and get produced, it's how you learn in a weird way whether, what works. And I feel like it's so valuable. And people can, you can work a play for so long in workshops, and then the play becomes flat and it loses its impetus and you never know and then it doesn't get produced and you never know what that what was there and you I, I feel like get it produced like seeing your work mm -hmm. is the most important thing the most like do it yourself and see what it is mm -hmm. yeah because just reading it around a table you know draft one where the actors have you know been handed the script as they're walking to the table Yes, you can learn from it, but uh, until you get it on its feet and get actors to be actors, you don't really know what you got. And yeah. So that um, I, I remembered a, a point from uh, earlier when Morwen was talking about uh, somehow bringing in crazy people to work the program, um, and I did have a degree in psychology, so maybe that contributed oh, to that ability. That's the missing piece. But in terms of today, one of the, I mean, all those theaters that welcomed crazy people have now all become successful subscription houses. And I f feel that in that move, there's a certain conservatism, and the mad people aren't as welcome. So bring back madness. Yes. Any advice? I mean, I, <laughs> I think the same thing of just, you know, uh, um, just doing it yourself, doing what you can do to get your play seen, I think is, is important. And working with people who you feel you can challenge and who can challenge you. Um, as opposed to feeling like, I need to go here because this place is good. Or this, you know, um, theater is, the theater I should be at, or this, I should work with this dramaturge because they're something, or this, you know, director because they're this or that. I think it has to be like, who can I work with who I feel is going to push me and who I can push to and I feel confident enough that I can have a conversation with them and a dialogue about how to push the work forward. Because if you're in a situation where you're working with someone here like, you're amazing, I can't say anything to you, everything you say is right, well, that's going to that's not going to necessarily produce um, the most like passionate and exciting theater where you're all working together to really see how far you can push this thing to, to tell the story that you want to tell. So I would say work with people who inspire you.